हेलो गाइस गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर Yeah, because are you fine now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Did you watch the video last class? Yes, sir. I did. Okay, because we'll continue from that only. Okay. So, guys, last class we uh, we started chemical kinetics, and we discussed about the rate of a reaction. Correct. How do we define a rate? so i'll do a quick recap okay the rate expression and then we'll see some problems okay so let me see who all have joined okay. just we'll wait for two moments one minute give me Um, so, okay. So last class we discussed about the rate uh, of a reaction, and suppose if you have a reaction given like this, the rate expression would be what? Suppose for a reaction, if I write down two A gives three times B, okay. so at time t is equals to 0 its concentration suppose i am assuming a not this is 0 and at time t is equals to t a converts into b so it is a not minus 2x and this becomes 3x okay so the rate of a is nothing but the rate of disappearance of a or rate of consumption of a right rate of a i said rate of a or we can also write rate of reactant that is nothing but rate of uh, uh, consumption consumption and that is nothing but the rate of uh, what disappearance. we can say disappearance all these things are same so anything you may have in the test right in the exam all terms are same this is equals to minus of d by dt of concentration of a instantaneous rate negative 
For reactant, we always take the negative sign, which the expression becomes minus D of DT. That is final minus initial A naught minus 2X minus A naught. And when you solve this, you'll get minus of, sorry, 2DX by DT. Minus DA by DT is equals to 2DX by DT we get. Okay. Similarly, we had also discussed the rate of D, which is nothing but the just opposite of it, rate of product, rate of appearance and rate of production. All are same thing is equals to plus D by DT of concentration of B, which is equals to uh, plus D by DT of final minus initial, which is nothing but 3 dx by dt. So if you look at this expression, this expression, and this one, and this is one. So if I equate dx by dt from these two expressions, we'll get dx by dt per mole is equals to minus of 1 by 2, or minus we'll write down like this, half the negative of D concentration of A by DT. This negative of D concentration A by DT is the rate of disappearance of A, includes the negative sign. is equals to one by three plus D of concentration of B by DT. So this is what this DX by DT is the ROR, that is rate of reaction we discussed last time class right and dA by dt is this rate of disappearance is always rate of a the expression you see I am writing it down minus dA by dt okay and rate of B is production of B plus D concentration of B by dt this is the two things you must take care of. Okay. So last class we discussed till here. Okay. Just, it was just a quick recap. Okay. So you yeah. told us to revise you that there's a question we had to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming to that. Maybe some of you were absent, absent last class. So that's why I've just given a quick recap of it. Okay. I'm coming to that question only. Before that, just one ex general expression I'll write down. Suppose we have a reaction, you have those who were there in the last class, you have already written it, just let it be, okay? A, A, B, B, C, C plus D, D we have. Then the rate of reaction for this reaction, the general expression we can write, D, X by D, T is equals to one by A, minus of D concentration of A by DT is equals to one by B minus D concentration of B by DT and then one by C minus concentration of uh, C divided by, it is minus or plus plus C by DT equals to one by D plus D concentration of D by DT. One last thing, that in this chapter, whenever I write this A in the square bracket, the square bracket means the concentration of A. So this term itself means the concentration of A we are talking about, okay? So this is what we were talking, we, we had talked last class till here. Now you see a few questions on this. Uh, the question is, we have a reaction say, 2A plus 3B, gives 5C, okay? At time T is equals to zero, it is given A is 10 molar, okay? And at 10 time T is equals to 20, any unit, second you can say or anything. Uh, this becomes five molar, right? You need to find out You need to find out the rate of A 
the rate of b and sorry rate of b then rate of c and the rate of reaction try this The simplest one, right? Done. Yeah. So the rate of A R A is equals to, and it is the average rate basically, right? So it is um, negative of final minus initial divided by the time taken for this. And that is one by four molar per second. Suppose the time is given in second here. Okay. Similarly, we can write for this reaction R O R is equals to uh, one by two minus of d a by d t. This expression we can write is equals to one by three. Minus of d concentration of d by dt, and then we have one by five plus of d concentration of c by dt. Okay, so minus d a by dt is given one by four, right? Minus d a by dt is rate of this. Okay, fine. So rate of a is equals to what we can write. Rate of A is minus d a by d t. Okay, so if I substitute this here, we can find out the rate of reaction one by one. One by one, we can find out all these things. The rate of reaction would be one by four into one by uh, two. That is one by eight molar per second. Um, the rate of B R B is equals to minus d b by d t. Right. So R B is equals to three into one by eight. That is three by eight molar per second, and R C is equals to five by eight molar per second. Simplest one, right? Okay. This was the basic question we have. So if you know the data for one reactant, you can find out for that, and then with this relation, we can find out the rate of the other species, other reactant or product that you have. This question you see. The statement is for the formation of for the formation of NH three from N two and H two. Formation of NH three from N two and H two. The rate of N two is given. That is, one point five into ten to the power minus three molar per second. This is given. You need to find out the rate of reaction. Okay. The options are one point five into ten to the power minus three. Molar per second, three into ten to the power minus three molar per second. C is point seven five into ten to the power minus three molar per second, and D is. Uh, I'll take one. Can't determine. Chalo.
that we don't know vikas okay that we don't know okay now you see i'll solve this this is a very good question okay now you solve this i'll do this as you see okay so what is the reaction we should write here n2 plus 3h2 n2 plus 3h2 gives 2nh3 so we can write um rate of n2 is equals to what we can write 1 by 3 of rate of h2 can we write this is equals to 1 by 2 of rate of ns3 right and this is equals to what the rate of reaction the ror is it correct r n2 is given so rate of reaction directly you can equate and you will get 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 molar per second okay this is the one thing that you can do now suppose what i am doing i am taking this half of n2 plus 3 by 2 of h2 gives nh3 suppose this reaction is there so if i write down the expression the expression will be 2 times of r of n2 correct me if i am wrong okay the calculation mistake if it is there this would be what 2 by 3 of r of h2 is equals to r of nh3 equals to r o r isn't it correct can we say this right so what is the rate of reaction from this that is 2 times into r of n2 and we are getting 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 molar per second okay so the rate is always defined for one mole so we have to take one mole of n2 no that is what i am talking about just listen to me first wait two minutes okay see the question this question first of all it was asked the exact question was asked in je and what mistake you have made here the same mistake has been made by most of the students okay and you see how they frame the question it's very simple reaction right everyone knows this reaction right even a 10th grade student if you ask and what is this reaction they can write you this n2 plus h2 gives 2 nh3 so they have taken a very simple reaction so that you can directly write down this reaction and find out the answer with respect to this reaction now suppose ruchir has written this reaction in the test paper ruchir has got this answer he goes with option a he was like okay this is the correct right but pradyut has has taken this reaction he got this answer he goes with b and now he is saying okay b is correct but we cannot have both answers no are you getting my point the question for a given set of data will have only one answer no right so the trick here is what that the first step that you have taken the mistake that you made is you have assumed the reaction the reaction is not given in the question if the reaction is this given in the question answer is this if the reaction is this given in the question answer is this if you take any other reaction with any other stoichiometric coefficient answer will be something else okay so we can have n number of answers here depending upon what reaction you choose in the react in the question are you getting my point so answer here yes. can't be determined yes for this question the answer is this is not correct this is not correct the answer is this cannot determine why because the reaction is not given in the question it is the other matter that you know the reaction once you write the reaction like this 
you have assumed the stoichiometric coefficient that you cannot do. Are you getting it? Yes. Vikas, clear? Yes, sir. Right? So please take care of these things. Very simple question. And 99% of the students, they have gone wrong in this. Right? So you cannot miss out this kind of question. Please take care of this. Even if you take the another one, another stoichiometric option you take, you'll, you'll get option C also. That is also possible. Right? So for this question, the answer is what? The answer is cannot be determined. So what is here like last class also I said that the reaction, see, uh, I'll go back again. Just let me just go back. Here you see what I have written. You must be wondering that why I'm writing this thing again and again, because I have done this last class also. I have written the rate of A is simple minus dA by dt. Do we have any stoichiometric coefficient here? Is it? No. So to find out the rate of any individual species, any individual species means any reactant or product, you just need the concentration at two different time. That is it. So subtract the concentration or divide by the time required for this change. What's the rate? Are you getting it? So rate of individual species is independent of the stoichiometric coefficient you are taking in the reaction. But agar mein rate find out karna hai, if you need to find out the rate of the reaction, we need this A, B and C. It should be given in the question. Agar reaction nahi diya hai, you cannot find out the rate of the reaction. Yes, clear? Yes, sir. Correct. So in this question, you see, even you can cross check whatever I said just now, you can cross check here. If the question is find out the rate of H2 or rate of NH3, then whatever reaction you take, the answer will be same. If you take this reaction, you can find out the rate of H2 or rate of NH3. And the rate of H2 you will have here, the same rate you will get here also. You can try. Find out the rate of H2 in both reactions. Could you do that once? Done? Is it same you're getting in both the reactions? Yes, sir. Right, so always keep this in mind that you can not find out the rate of, you know, a reaction which is not given in the question, right? You cannot assume the reaction. So write on one note after this, write on, if the balanced reaction, if the balanced reaction
a relative rate we can say because in real life situation you're talking about so relative rate we can take okay so a relative it is reacting in this rate n2 h2 and r2 the rate of the reaction we cannot say in that case also okay sir right. we can say it will be either in the multiple of this thing in that way you can say okay so one note you write down here in if balanced chemical reaction is not given if balanced chemical reaction is not given then we cannot find out the rate of reaction then we cannot find out the rate of the reaction since the rate of reaction since the rate of the reaction depends upon sorry rate of the reaction ha huh, depends upon the isoisometric coefficient so the rate of the reaction depends upon the isoisometric coefficient so what reaction you have taken what isoisometric coefficient you are taking it 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 is no it depends upon that accordingly to that you will get the rate of the reaction next line but the rate of but the rate of any individual species any individual species we can determine rate of any individual species we can determine without knowing the without knowing the reaction it just require it just require the concentration or pressure at two different time concentration or pressure at two different time okay so must take care of this this exact question was asked in je uh, so okay can you repeat that previous sentence uh which one last point yes sir. Ah, the last point was uh, i'll repeat this um but the rate of any individual species we can determine without knowing the rate of the reaction and we just need the concentration or pressure at two different time for this concentration or pressure at two different time okay this is very important thing now one more question you see the reaction is given that is n2 plus 3 h2 gives 2 nh3 if the rate of ammonia rate of ammonia is 1.7 kg per r for the given reaction then calculate the then calculate the rate of hydrogen rate of h2 in gram per
Okay, how many of you are getting 42.5 gram per minute? One, two, three, four, Okay, so it's just the, most of you have got 42.5, correct. How many of you have got five gram per minute? Okay. What is your answer here? Okay, Mahit, you got 42.5. Okay, so these two options uh, were there in the question. The same question was asked in JE. Okay. And the correct answer in this is five gram per minute. 42.5, most of you have got, and in the exam also, most of the students have got 42.5, but that is also again wrong. Why, I'll tell you. What you have done, uh, rate of ammonia is given, right? So R of NH3 equals to 1.7 kg per hour. And with respect to this, if you find out the rate of H2, that would be what? One by three, it is two by three times of, sorry, it is, it is three by two times of 1.7 kg per hour, which you can change the it's unit. 1.7 into 1000 divided by 60. And when you solve this, you'll get 42.5 gram per minute. But you have to convert it to moles and moles. Yes. Oh, so okay. this is what you have done. Most of you have done this. In, in the exam also, they have done like this only. But the point is, this three by two is the molar ratio, isn't it? Yes. And this is the mass given. So you cannot relate mass and moles. So here your answer was right. The first answer that you gave. Okay. Rujir Parekh, yes, you also got it right. Yeah. So this is moles and this is mass. So you cannot do this. The entire thing is wrong. So what you need to do, you need to convert this kg per hour into mole per minute. Right. So you can keep this in mind that rate of reaction or rate of any individual species, you must have to take in mole per time. Time unit can be anything, hour, minute, second, depending upon the what data is given in the question, right? But the numerator here, it must be moles. You cannot have mass in the numerator. So convert this into moles, right? Convert this unit into this entire thing into mole per minute, and then you can relate with this. Tell me what you're getting. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay, so all of you must take care of all these things. Okay, this, this, chap this chapter is quite easy, right? The solution, solid state, chemical kinetics, electrochemistry, a little bit tricky, it may have some time. But these three chapters, directly you will get four marks, right? So four into three, 12 marks, you should know, you should not miss. Only thing is the small, small things you have to take care of. This chapter is quite mathematical. Okay. There's nothing like exceptions kind of thing. Like obviously we have chemistry. So two, three things hardly you have to memorize here, but everything is quite, you know, it's very mathematical. Once you know the concept, you can do it easily, but don't do mis mistakes like this. Okay. Remember that the exact question you see, it was asked in J. So in J they have asked this kind of question where you can make mistakes. Because, because they always reject the students. It's all about rejection, okay? 
because you know to select 50,000 out of 15 lakh is very difficult, right? Rather than the rejection. To take care of all these things. Okay, both questions were asked in JE. Okay, one more simple example, simple question we'll see, and then we'll move on to the next uh, topic. Wait, sir. Uh, wait, sir. How do you like convert it into moles per minute again? See, uh, I'll do that. Wait. Uh, what is given? Rate is equals to 1.7 kg, right? So first of all, we convert this into grams, 1.7 into 1000, it is gram. Mass divided by molecular mass. Molecular mass of what? This 1.7 is given for NH3, ammonia. So molecular mass of ammonia, 17. So this becomes mole, right? Mole. In the denominator, we have R. We have to convert this into minute, then into 60. here. So this becomes mole per minute. So first kg to gram, then gram divided by the molecular mass gives you the number of moles and the unit conversion of time. Understood, Mehul? Yes. Right, so this you'll get rate in mole per minute. This you multiply by three by two, you'll get the answer. Okay, this question you see, A gives B and it is an unbalanced reaction. We don't know what is the you know balanced reaction we have. The reaction is unbalanced here. And the relation it is given, it is log of, log of minus D concentration of A by DT. is equals to log of plus B, D, B concentration of B by DT plus one. This relation is given in the question. Find out the molar ratio of A and B. So log is natural log. Sorry? So here log is natural log, right? Yes, base 10. Oh, base 10. Find out the molar ratio of A and B. Yes, 10 is to 1. Simple mathematics you have to use. 10A gives B. So we can write this as log of base 10 minus dA by dt is equals to log of base 10 plus db by dt and one we can write log 10. Okay, so this is equals to minus da by dt is equals to 10 log, sorry, 10 plus db by dt which further we can write 1 by 10 minus of dA by dt is equals to plus dB by dt. So this becomes a stoichiometric coefficient. So the reaction is 10A gives B. So ratio is 10 is to 1. 